Hi, I want to share three tips with you on how to have authentic, connected, virtual meetings that everyone's doing right now. Before I do that though, I wanna create a context for it. So, and I'm gonna read a, li a little short thing from my book, Spiral Impact, that's just new out. So, um, you must be a martial artist because you bow to me when we began. Someone said that to me in a meeting. While funny, there's a deep lesson to be learned. The martial bow is about acknowledging and honoring the interaction of the, with the other person. On the Aikido mat, the bow is accompanied with asking, Onageishimas, which translated into English is, will you do me a favor? I really like this bowing ritual. It creates basically a container that we can now have our conversation. And in my tradition, my understanding is we bow, we actually look at the ground, we offer our head, and it's a way of, of being vulnerable, offering our vulnerability to be here together. So I like to put that in some context. So, and it's a, a great thing to think about with any interaction. And, you know, in our culture, we tend to shake hands and, um, and that's all changed right now. Who knows if that'll ever come back because um, the world has changed. But so let me give you three tips. So virtual meetings with your teams. So um, number one, creating that container. I think it's really important. There's to be some kind of acknowledgement and connection when you begin. And so we talked about having some kind of a, some kind of a way to check in that's, that's easy for people where you can kind of read they can kind of express where they're at without saying, how are you feeling today? So four examples are, one is I, I've used this a lot where check in with people if, if they were to describe where they are with the weather, what would it be? Um, another one is I share the, the Kubler-Ross change curve, which is the, the, fa the, the, the phases of grief. And that can share with people what all the changes, all the things they're going through are normal and that it's a it's a process and so if they can identify that on a chart it again it, it gives it makes it easier for them to share another thing i really like doing is highlights and lowlights um, each person share high, something going great something not going so great and that gives people both the time to 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 share a problem and also to look at uh, some appreciation of some kind and then also um, kitty shared uh, a Chris Taylorism, which is uh, rate yourself on a scale of one to five and have an image that that relates to how you are with that. So, so those are some ways. So that's tip number one. Have some kind of thing you can make up your own. I'm sure there's lots of other things out there, but maybe something that's based upon what your business is. So tip number two, recognize that not everyone is comfortable be, with being on video, and that's okay because I think that's having video, now I'm not doing video other than myself in my, my noon meetings I've been doing, but we're not a, really a team. Um, but if I were doing one-on-one -on -one and if I were in an intact team, video is really important. You wanna keep a tabs on each other. And sometimes you can't see what's going on with a person unless you actually see them. So video, I was out walking my neighborhood last night and I was surprised I, I ran into a college student. She shared with me that their courses are all online now. And she said, I feel so uncomfortable because I've never seen my professors so up close. And she says, I feel like everybody's looking at what I'm doing. And so it kind of puts you in a spotlight and it's gonna take time for people to adjust to that. And I imagine it's gonna be one of those innovative things that come out of all of this is people getting really comfortable on camera, perhaps. Okay, so that's number two. So number one is create some kind of opening container. Number two is um, recognize that video is uncomfortable, but, but do video. And then the third thing is, you know, it's, we tend to um, ask people, well, how are you doing? And and that's a question that's, that's pretty common in our culture, but most often the answer to that is fine, which means nothing, really. It doesn't really give you any information. I encourage people to think about what are open-ended questions that you can ask people to help them engage more. So um, could be something like, what are, you, what are you learning? What have you learned today? Or what's, what has surprised you the most about working from home? And tell me more about that. Um, what about, what have you learned from being around your children? 
How are they doing with this? Um, what's um, what what could be what could make this situation what could make this better for you in your home? Um, what are some maybe dumb things you're finding that we do that maybe we shouldn't do? But thinking about questions that are that have an answer that's not just fine. Um, so so that's the the tip number three is to to really think good questions and. And someone on the call or on the video asks, well, what if they just have a short answer? Well, then you just say, hey, tell me more about that. So, because you know, it's a spiral. You can kind of keep on moving on. So spiral impact. Now, I um, want to close this out because I've gone longer than I thought I would, but um, getting back to my Aikido thing, you know, what we do at the end is we bow and we say, domo arigato gozaimashita which means thank you very much. I wish you well, stay, you and your families and everyone just stay safe, stay well.